Encode your DNA. Define your genetic structure. Choose a genetic resilience. Choose your first style. Pick your main color. Choose your detail color. Pick a class. Com Steda. Commando. Cyfreak. Commando. Deadeye. Mercenary. De Com Saboteur. Sentinel. Cyfreak. Mercenary. Mercenary chosen. That'll work. Here's somebody with a troubled past, drawn into the spotlight of a story that's already begun. We're already at a crossroads. Choosing a path in life is that fork in the road where you make a choice or simply stop living. But for you, it's not only a crossroad, but a choice. A reflection of your key, the primal energy that flows through everything. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm the dark side of you, your inner voice to be precise, an echo of the balance and consequence of your actions as you move forward. Can't believe you'd choose that thing over me! But I'll be here waiting for you when you have a change of heart. That thing? I'm right here. Let me remind you we're two halves of the same, with the difference being I'm the better half. Better half? My way is both better and brighter. Light makes it easier to see the best end. The best end is the one you decide yourself, and it seems we're headed in the right direction. Guess left can be right, sometimes.
Stories of death and the bodies left behind. A reminder that we're at the mercy of nature and the one that preys on others. Do you remember the beast that shattered your family? Or did you choose to forget? You turned your back on our world and got lost in your own. Meanwhile, the predator only grew stronger. Better make a run for it. This is not the time nor place to end this story. This time, it was best to run and live to fight another day. Let us hope you're ready for it when it comes. The Predator isn't the only threat. The wildlife started to mutate when the end of days began, and the Tree of Life started to die. Hack and slap!
Don't slip. The oil sludge is everywhere. To most, it only means death, but some have adapted to the new environment and changed with it. Evolution has its ways. The deep cut. Bang, bang. What are you going to do? The oil sludge is everywhere. To most, it only means death. But some have adapted to the new environment and changed with it. Evolution has its ways. Up for grabs.
Look, an emergency box from the once was. A rare sight. Pipe looks weak. The claw bar should come in handy. Whoa! It's time to find a way out of this place. No, really, I mean it. The Morks produce biomatter in their multi-organ that they shed under distress. Blobs that affect the cellular coding strands of any living being. When absorbed, including you. Flash the slash! That paid off. Clamber right up. Toxanol built vessels called Arcs to save themselves from the impending doom. But was it too late? It is only from the flight logs of the single Ark they left behind that we know other Arcs travelled through the sky and beyond. It seems those that came before us never lost hope in finding a new home for their kind. Just a few moves left. Make them count.
There are few records of the chain of events that led to the big apocalypse eons ago, but it's clear the world wasn't prepared for how recklessly the Toxanol Corporation would make its mark on the world. Their rare earth mining and nuclear industries generated tons of waste and, without consideration for the future, they dumped it all in landfills until they ran out of space. That's when they made the big mistake. They began dumping the toxic waste in the surf just off the coast instead, assuming that it would sink and decay with time. And they were right, but no one was prepared for what was about to unfold. Once in the surf, the radiation interfered with the genetics of the wildlife and created bizarre mutations in their offspring. It had an inconceivable impact on biodiversity and the entire ecosystem. The world as they knew it crumbled as nature retaliated. It would never be the same again, and what remained of it became ours. of spark metal going pew pew is never a good thing. It's coming from behind that door. A warning label. The box looks like a potential brain melt. It's going to take a bit of puzzling to short circuit the door. Just a few moves left. Make them count. There you go. The wheeled one is outnumbered. You'd better help him out. Shouldn't take much more. That's the last of them. Let's talk to the wheeled one before backup arrives. That'll come in handy.
He wants to thank you for taking his side against the scavengers. He sounds familiar. You just can't figure out why. He presents himself as out of date. He knows he's way overdue, but he hasn't given up. He doesn't seem surprised that you don't recognize him. You were just a child back then. The night everything changed. There have been rumors of a one-eyed ronin seen outside the Great Wall, and he's happy to see it's true. The legend of the one-eyed child that grew up as an outcast is old and sad. The child could have been anyone, but the evil it had fled had left a mark, a facial scar to remember the past. How Lupa Lupin somehow left you alive after his raid on the old village. He must have had a purpose with that. The question is, what? There's no doubt you're the child, and that what Lupa Lupin did to your village, your Mooma and Popsy, was the beginning of the end. He says it has taken you a long time to bring the past back up to the present, to find your way back, but he's grateful you have. It was after the attack that the unity fell apart. Your Moomer's disciples divided and formed tribes as a reaction to the blight that had fallen upon the land. The impending threat of the World Eaters bringing down the Tree of Life is ever so close. He also worries about the Jagni tribe that's actively working for a doomsday and purging of the world. Had it not been for the Tree of Life, no one would have survived. He hopes you at least remember the tree. <laughs> Asks if you were tired, as it's a bit of a hike here from the village. He wonders if your Mooma knows you are here. Well, well, well. <laughs> Sounds like he thinks she does, despite your heart growing dark. There's nothing as powerful as a Mooma's love. <laughs> he understands why you came all the way out here, to see them, the Potato People. <laughs> the Potato People, or Nono, are a wonder somehow interlinked with this little tree here fueling its source of life. Magic? He claims it's just the force of life, the existence of energy, powering and connecting all things living, like the Nono. The Nono prefer to hide in glitter grass. He says you should get over there and ruffle it, see if you can make one come out of hiding.
You found one. You should be proud. They don't come out for everyone. The Nono's key energy is just what the Pensai needs to complete its cycle and grow into a tree of life. <laughs> Only time will tell. At least his intention is to dedicate his life to it. He has the feeling the fate of the world depends on it. Well, well, well. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You need to support the tree for a long time to come. The only way it'll grow tall is with the burst of key released from the nono as they become one with the tree. You'll need a net to catch the Nono, and he wants you to use his, but asks you to be gentle. The Nono are sensitive beings, an embodiment of Ki, the primal energy. You handle that net like you've never done anything else. He's impressed. He's grateful for all the help he can get. There's lots of Nono out there that need to be guided to the roots of the Pensai tree. <laughs> Oh, it'll need a continuous flux of key over the twenty twelve months to come, so countless, he'd say. <laughs> One day he hopes the tree will have grown tall enough to sustain the world. <laughs> but today your focus is getting this one to become one with the tree. Now that you've seen the Nono's connection with the tree with your own eyes, you have no reason to doubt. From this day on, he'll make nurturing the Pensai into a tree of life, a life goal, not only for our village's sake, but for all of us, everyone. One day, the land won't be as peaceful. Not even your Moomer will be able to protect us. You can already see the effects from how reckless those before us acted, and unless something changes, we're doomed. The land won't survive the side effects of the old world's industrial advances. He says you'd better hurry back to the village before your Moomer comes looking for you. You did good here today. No, she's got lots on her mind and needs rest after the raid last night on the Lupin camp with her disciples. Wonders if they let the Predator family live or not. He lost you there for a while, but no memory is alone. It's part of a trail you can follow. He says he remembers every single day he devoted to growing the tree of life, but now he's afraid it might be in vain. 
The tree started to die when the end of days begun, and it wasn't long after that that the world eaters arrived. The genetic evolution that occurred after the apocalypse that Toxinol Corporation inflicted on the land set the world eaters' DNA into overdrive. His friend Gizmo is working on a mecton and needs help defeating the Jumbo Puff at the end of the West Route. Wiz is still repairing his octopod to confront the Merc Puff that dwells deep down under the surface at the end of the Northwest Route. Noko has tamed the Majut and is preparing to take on the Hoof Puff at the end of the East Route. Finally, Goop is almost done with the Goo Glide, a machine able to ride the waves of the surf all the way out to the Porky Puff at the end of the route to the southeast. Out of date, says his friends, are gearing up to stop the World Eaters. There's one at the end of each route. The road ahead won't be easy but he's counting on your support. His friends aren't strong enough to end this on their own. He wants you to understand that you'll all die if the tree isn't saved. His friends have prepared something specific for each world eater. The Mecton, the Octopod, the Majut, and the Goo Glide are almost ready to ride. The what? Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the Tribe War and the situation with the World Eaters. The whoa. You're getting the hang of it. Quickest way out is through the roof where they came in, and the rope looks strong enough to climb. Know that the Tree of Life is dying. Its days are numbered. Without help, it can't endure the environmental change and assault from the World Eaters. A signpost maps it out for the cartographically challenged. Let's see. the world eater that chewed off out of date's leg. You'll need a hat trick to bring that down. The world eaters have made their marks on our world over time. 
That's not the first nor the last village it'll leave in its wake. Look, a survivor. Glad to see someone made it out alive. He's heard the stories about the terror inflicted by the World Eaters to other enclaves, but never expected one to come all the way here. He worries there won't be much left to save if this continues, even if the Tree of Life survives the attack. He doesn't know what your connection is to this place, but something tells him you've stayed true to your heart. Anyway, he needs help and says it's by your actions you'll be judged, not by your intentions. He's grateful for that. You still seem to have a spark of light in you. What's there to like about light? It hurts to look at. Not as much as it hurts to look at you. Always making this personal. And you're always trying to pretend it's not. There's out of date again. He must have missed something important. Out of date says you will make a better stand against the world eaters with the support of a tribe, and there are two nearby. The Myriad tribe is likely to be a good match as they act on the understanding of the greater good and have a code of honor. Regardless of who you choose, it won't be easy, as the conflict between the tribes is worse than ever, teetering on the brink of war. The Myriad's conviction to stop the World Eaters began when the Leviathans rose from the depths of the surf. Siding with the Myriad's movement for wholeness in a fragmented world might seem like the logical thing to do, but is it the right thing? One thing's certain, though. Destiny arrives all the same. The Jagni tribe only ever had one conviction, to bring balance to the world by wiping out the weak. They believe a cleansing is necessary to restore the world and want to let the World Eaters bring down the Tree of Life. But siding with Chagney isn't necessarily a bad thing. Fate will find a way. Out of date says someone needs to break the stalemate and shift the balance of power to either Jagney's or Myriad's side. He believes the tribe Sifus, Myriad especially, will listen to you and expects you to pay at least one of them a visit and play your part. He can sense you share Myriad's view on the world. The Myriad would embrace someone willing to fight against the tyranny of the Jagni. 
Nuburak, Chintwata Motihuasa. Out of date will be waiting for you beneath the Tree of Life if you lose track of what you need to do. Kabobe Farhi. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the Tribe War and the situation with the World Eaters. Another fork in the road. It's either the tunnel or the motor bridge. What'll it be? It's unusual that natural tunnels like this still exist. Most of them got flooded. This area was beautiful before the tribe war began. Look at it now. It's a war zone. That's the Myriad tribe's fortress. Will they be friends or foe? You should head up there. That way you'll know. Let's see. It's a beaten path to that door. If you go there, you'd better make an entrance. Says they're wary of strangers. They're at war. Hopes to see you again soon. Says they're cautious of non-allies. Says the Sifu decides who the Sifu wants to see, but is willing to let you give it a try. Sipi? La panen a ginkan man. Gerat na falo hutut mustugai la wute. The Myriad tribe act on understanding of the greater good and a code of honor. They believe uniting the tribes is the only way to restore the peace. The Sifu is convinced that defeating the World Eaters and saving the Tree of Life is the only way to make the world a better place. He welcomes you to the Myriad Fort and introduces himself as the tribe's Sifu. But he was hoping you'd show up. The news of a vigilante ronin on crusade crossing the Great Wall through the crack in Bunker 101 has preceded you. He heard you took out of date side against the scavengers in Bunker 101. It seems you believe in helping your next, and that's something you have in common. He's convinced you've returned for a reason, and is glad you chose to come here. There's something about your spirit that sparks memories of you as a kidling. He can still sense you're kind-hearted. 
The Sifu says sometimes one memory can make another come to life. He hasn't thought about your Muma for ages, even though she taught him a lot. He was one of the original Wang Fu disciples. All the gurus are gonna hate ech ech, that good thinking, can't boof. Your Muma invented Wang Fu. Originally, it consisted of unarmed combat and the six weapons, the boomerang, the shuriken, the bow, the staff, the nanchuk, and the hook and chain. Get a one thing. The Sifu says it's time to set the past aside, at least for now. Unrest is sweeping the land, and there are rivals in all directions. Look out, my lost sada can't boof. Myriad wants unity between the tribes. Their goal is understanding of the greater good and establishing a code of honor. If you believe there's some good in everyone, there's still hope for tomorrow. You'll unite the tribes and defeat the world eaters to save the tree of life. Plats. He was hoping you'd join them. You understand that there's no harm in doing good to others. The Sifu was waiting for something to tip the balance in their favor, and with you by their side, he's confident you can unite the other tribes. The one you should coerce first is the Jagni tribe. The Jagni tribe may believe that fear and hatred will lead them to domination, a vanquisition of the tribes and destruction of the Tree of Life won't be the restart they want. It's just an end to everything. Their kin have run out of options and found themselves backed into a corner. Even those who desire peace have been forced to prepare for war. You need to take the struggle to the enemy, or the enemy will bring it to you. When survival is threatened, there's no other option left but war. He wants you to focus. These are the new rival outposts your tribe needs to take control of. He says you'll regret not being on their side. The only way you'll learn their secrets, Wung Fu and the tribe weapon now, is if you defeat him. And that will never happen. Get out full of us in the you both have gentle minds, so they want to wage a gentle war. A war that bonds as much as it breaks. Tells you not to be afraid. Your fate cannot be taken from you. Claim the rival outposts and earn the right to wield the tribe weapon. Once you've dealt with the rival's outposts, you'll challenge their Sifu to unite their tribe with yours and let your kin share land again. They pass the point of no return as their words lost power and see no other way forward than using violence to combat violence. Seeing you brings back his memories of the old village. Myriad wants unity between the tribes. Their goal is understanding of the greater good and establishing a code of honor. He remembers your kind and unselfish soul, and can sense you still have it in you, the will to do good. Anyway, the memories you make with your family are strong, and can sometimes come to life. Passing the old village on your way to the first rival outpost might help. He can't blame you for not remembering, but he can sense the stillness of something lost. Glad to see you stopped keeping to yourself and are actually helping these days. 
Wishes you goodbye. Better beware, that's a mump up ahead. They were hit hard by evolution, the wonky ones especially. Deformed and unfurred. Time is lost on this place, but it evokes a tingling sensation. There's something special about it, drawing you closer. Let's see. As time passes, memories fade, and sometimes feelings change. It's not about who you were, it's about who you'll become. 
this story is far from over. Echoes of a long-lost past like whispers in the wind. Here's someone who takes each day as it comes. He asks how you are today. Then he wants you to know that if you find yourself going through bad times, you should just keep going. He wonders where you've been. He hopes you've been out at the lake, practicing your swimming technique. Learning to swim can be scary when you don't know what you're doing. But fortunately, he's here to give you a helping hand. He thinks you should really know how to swim by now. Why not? There's no better time to do what needs to be done than right now. He says, that wasn't too bad, was it? At least you learned that you'll drown if you don't swim. But you need practice, lots of practice. Great things usually happen to those who never stop trying. He hopes you'll be one of them. You just need more time in the surf. That's the only way you'll ever learn how to swim. You can never try too hard. Judging by your Mooma's look, it seems you forgot something. You promised you'd train with her before the sun goes down. It's time to go. You know you can't make up for lost time. You should know. Practice make... You have to keep working on it if you want to be good at it. She'll see you at the village square. She'll be waiting for you. There will be a surprise for you at the end, too. Here's another familiar face with lots on his mind. Asks how you're feeling today. Being nice comes easy for him. That doesn't make it less important. He was hoping you could help him pick up some scrap for a thingamajig he's working on. It's your own future you're risking by not caring for the environment. The next generation will pay for the mistakes of the last. You should look for things that are recyclable. It shouldn't take you too long to find some. He wonders what usefulness you found. He says whatever it is, it shouldn't be left lying around on the ground. He can work wonders with almost anything and asks if you know how to upcycle. Speed spread, he says only a few are willing to do the little things, but if you make enough of them, they can have a big impact too. 
He'd love to teach you to upcycle, and the scrap you found would be a good start. You did well, but he can't help but wonder why you decided to craft a weapon. He believes being considerate will help you feel at peace with yourself. He understands, but hopes you won't be needing it any time soon. He thinks mastering the six weapon styles of Wang Fu is more than enough for anyone. He's looking forward to seeing what you'll make next. It seems you have a talent for this. It looks like she's starting to lose her patience. Amun. You know she doesn't like waiting for you. She wants to see you on the village square right away. Then you've got a good excuse. You share a responsibility to prevent hardship on nature and the environment. It's your future. Kala. She wants you to grow up and start thinking for yourself. You really need to find yourself before she's gone. And Sonbara. Beri? That's all she's ever asked of you, that you'll try and give it your best. You can't do more than that. You've always followed your own path, but this time... Then start by meeting her on the village square and take it from there. She knows you're a free spirit, always on the move, like the wind. They look determined. Better watch out. He asks you to stop right there and wonders where you think you're going. That makes him wonder why you were here looking for it. There's no way they'll let you pass. He wants to know who you think you are. You'll have to face pain at some point. He offers to help you get it over with. She asks if you're hurt. What happened? She says it's nice of you to consider them, but they have weapon training at sunrise tomorrow, so they'll need all the rest they can get. The most important thing is that you're okay. Tukonda. It's time to focus on your training now. Pala, can't see. She said it before. Wang Fu will keep your body in good health, and that's how you keep your mind strong and clear.
Here's someone close to heart, doing what he does best. Papa Zulu. Seeing you always puts a smile on your Popsy's face. He wants to know how you're feeling. Mashaku Hirsabe. Training with Muma will make you feel better. It always does. Sem Baskilka Michael Tagukal. He asks if you could help him too before you leave for training. He'll talk to her, sure, but you know she wants you to accept responsibility for your own actions and future. He suggests you get going and find him gadgets and ideas for how you can upcycle some old fabrics. He's curious to see what you found. He's all for renewal and has even considered making the trip out into the wilds to look for a bio-nucleus pool and refresh his DNA. He can work wonders with pretty much anything and asks if you know how to upcycle. Kidlo. Thinks some are and some aren't. One thing's for sure, though, your Mooma thinks it all takes up too much space in the house. Und lump. He says it's about time you learned how and offers to teach you, starting with the scrap you found. The style might be too edgy for his taste, but it looks sharp on you. He knows she's already proud of you and everything you've achieved so far. You should take it with you, wear it to practice. He's sure your Muma will forgive you for not wearing the traditional outfit. He's looking forward to seeing what you'll make next. It seems you have a talent for this. Your Muma says it's about time you got here. That it? Says being on time would be better yet. She says she is eager to get started. You don't have much time left before the sun goes down. But there's enough time left for repetition and you need it. Training dummies don't hit back. Wants you to prove that with some practice first. Your Muma says you did well today. She's so proud of you. Thanks you for being such a good student. Been working on a present for you, with the help of Gizmo and Wiz. You should go see him and find out what it is. You've deserved it. That's why you should be sure to thank him for it. K. 
catchy. Your Muma says she's never seen an apparatus as green as this little thing. It's wonderful. Figuring that out is half the fun. A piece of Scraptronics like this has built-in old-world tech that makes it a potent communication device. It's called an automaton, and it's hardwired to your DNA. It'll follow wherever you go and see whatever you see. You're lucky to have such a fine helper with you. Your Muma says you look tired. No wonder. It's been a long day. Says a good rest makes you ready for tomorrow. Rest and you'll find strength for tomorrow. <sighs> Nothing could stop Luka Lupin from setting the world on fire. Antoro. Can't see. Come on in. Your Muma urges you to blaze a trail. A burnt kidling will learn to dread fire. That's just adding fuel to the flames. Give it a last burst and you'll make it. Your Muma says this is it. The time has come. She must fight Lupa Lupin. This time there's no escape. She can hear him coming. Lupa Lupin is a problem older than you. Whatever happens, you need to know she loves you. And everything she's done has been to protect you, your Popsy, and those she was chosen to lead. She tells you to stay back. This is her fight. It has nothing to do with you. History has finally caught up with her. She loves how brave you are, but she can't be worrying about you while she fights. This is her fight. Here it comes. The past coming to haunt the present. You must go through fire and water to make it out of here. Your Muma says you can make it if you believe in it. Where she goes, you go. Blood is thicker than water. You're in deep surf. Don't make waves. The surf goes where it wants to go. It'll take you to the shore as long as you go with the flow.
Death is not to be feared by one who has lived life with a pure heart. A part of her will live on in you. The creature is hungry for more. Nothing is going to stand in its way now. If a sacrifice is made for someone else, it's not lost, but passed on to the next. Life must go on. Real sacrifice comes from love and necessity when all other options are exhausted. The ultimate test of conscience is the willingness to give up anything to save what you truly care about. What you do for yourself dies with you. What you do for your kin remains and makes you immortal in their memory. As the moment fades and is lost, the only thing that remains is loneliness. It doesn't mean you'll forget your past. It simply means you need to move on. Look at those muscles. The tribe's caught a fluffy hog. Better watch out, it's no pet. They couldn't keep it down. Fluff hogs on the loose. You gave them no choice but to take it down, even though they'd planned to take the fluff hulk out to the far fnacky leaves and let it go. They've received news a Ronin had strengthened their ranks and were looking forward to meeting you. 
A group of myriad crusaders already headed out to Jagni's Mercadorpus outpost and are waiting for you there. Me, my gallery. You should hurry there and help them best the outpost. You complete them. From this point on, the myriad is unbroken. Toxanol was something called a corporate juggernaut, and our world still bears the marks of the massive ecological catastrophes they inflicted upon the land. The apocalypse they caused was the end of days for their world, but for us, it was simply a beginning. An emergency box from the old day. Wow, bet that nut makes a tight fist. Tunnels like this still carry echoes from the past. Can you hear it? Person.
That notice board, filled with the leftovers of used-to-be once. You're getting close to one of those old Toxanol brick towns. Pay attention. The Toxanol Corporation made this place, and then just threw it away when they were done with it. Toxanol never cared about the waste, as long as they didn't have to pay to clean it up. There must be a track somewhere in this brick town. Just hope it's not buried. <laughs> 